So for those of you who don't know, my name is Laura, um, and I'm a senior. Um, and I'd like to start today with a prayer uh, by a Jesuit whose name I'm now realizing I don't know how to pronounce, but we're going to try it anyway. So uh, if you just want to enter into a space of, of prayer or quiet, um, I'd like to start with this. Above all, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet, it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take very long time. And so I think it is with you. Your ideas mature gradually. Let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste. Don't try to force them on as though you could be today what time, that is to say, grace and circumstances acting on your goodwill, will make of you tomorrow. Only God could say what this new spirit gradually forming within you will be. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that his hand is leading you and accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete. And that was written by a Jesuit, um, Chardonnay? Yes. Pierre, Pierre Chardonnay. What he said. <laughs> so over the past few weeks, I've been feeling restless. The feeling seems to be contagious. My friends, professors, and even the flowers and trees on the quad seem to be humming with energy. And my restlessness has nothing to do with those last sleepless nights finishing up papers and exams. Rather, as the school year has been winding down to a close, the feeling has only been growing. I think I finally have an explanation for this restlessness. When I was a first year, I overheard one of the seniors who I really admired saying, if you aren't ready to leave Loyola at the end of your four years, then Loyola has failed you. Then, I could not understand what he meant. How could I ever be ready to leave the place that I was just immersing myself in, just learning to love. Still, his comment stuck with me, even through the beginning of this year, when I still could not fathom being ready to let go of Loyola. Who would want to leave the place where I found some of my deepest joy, my closest friendships, and my greatest understanding of myself in the world around me? Now though, I think I'm beginning to understand what he meant. Though I am very sad to leave Loyola, I know that I am needed elsewhere. I have had the opportunity to be part of countless amazing experiences that have turned my vision outward. I have turned to Loyola for wisdom and guidance, and it has shown me a world that is desperately in need of people working for justice and peace, both in our country and around the world. I have turned to Loyola and it has shown me two blocks down the road in Park Heights where a literacy program teaches adult students who never graduated high school how to read. I have turned to Loyola and it has shown me a girl named Sophie in Arbolito, Ecuador, who is our age, who travels to, into the city every day from her impoverished neighborhood just so she has the same chance to get what we have all already received, an education. I have turned to Loyola and it has shown me a world that is staggeringly imperfect. A world full of injustice, pain, and brokenness. But I have also turned to Loyola and seen hope. I have seen the incredible power that lies in a community working toward a common mission. I have seen that I won't have to do it alone. That's why we strive to be men and women for and with others. And, more than anything, I have seen and felt the most immense joy 
which is the greatest gift of all. I have felt the joy of late night conversations in the chapel with friends, which are such a blessing. I have felt the joy of countless celebrations and dancing and rejoicing and simply being alive. I have even felt the joy in turning in assignments that I am proud of and serving others in whatever small ways that I can. And I have certainly and most importantly felt the joy of working in music ministry for my entire four years here, doing what I love most in the entire world with people who support me more than I can say and who I have been honored to know. Over the course of our years here at Loyola, we are filled to the brim academically and spiritually. We are nourished and encouraged and challenged. We are overflowing with knowledge and blessings and hopefully, above all, gratitude. And it is only now that I realize that we don't leave any of these things behind when we leave here, whether we are just leaving for the summer or we're moving on to our next steps. We don't abandon our faith or our insights or even our community, even though we physically leave. Instead, we take this opportunity to pack up a suitcase full of ideas and dreams and hopes and fears and promises. We board planes and drive cars and move mountains to get where we are headed. Just like our disciples in the Gospel reading, we carry the light and the peace of Christ with us as we go. I know now more than ever that there is work to be done, and I'm restless to begin. There is work for me, and there is work for you, and there is work for all of us. The work of serving our brothers and sisters is a heavy burden, but one that we have the privilege, and more importantly, the responsibility to undertake. So now, in this transitional stage, as I look back to where I have been and I look forward to where I am going, I feel myself more in suspense and incomplete than ever. I am restless because I don't know exactly where I am going or where I will land. I am incomplete. Everyone here is incomplete in some way. There is always more that we are being called to, what we like to call the magis. After all, as Chardin puts it, only God could say what this new spirit gradually forming within you will be. I ask you to pay attention, to listen to the new spirit that God is gradually forming within you. Where will it lead me? Where will it lead you? I hope that it leads you closer to what brings you joy. I hope it leads you closer to where the world needs you with your unique gifts most. I hope that you and I both find an end to our restlessness in the one who is both with us now and waiting for us along the way. The strongest truth that I've learned over my four years lies in the very first line. Above all.